global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Crises precipitate change. <laughs> Secretly plotting your device. I want to devise a buyer. Hello everyone, Darko2012 here with Global Government News, reading an article titled, Russia Warns West Against, quote, Crippling Iran Sanctions. So, you can check out my previous videos where you have Secretary of State Clinton calling for further sanctions on Iran that would target the Revolutionary Guard, their elite army faction and it's not a really big article but worth posting of course because the constant uh, not build up a constant drum beating that is going on with the West to drain Iran, drain their economy and kill it, kill it dead, whatever economy they have left. And in tandem with that, they want to create a revolution against the current, well, they call it a regime, right? But they, it, it's considered the Islamic Republic. They have elections in that. But uh, not saying it's the greatest country in the world, but I don't think the U.S. or the U.K. or the, any of the other countries, uh, such as Finland and I believe Germany in them and France, I know France, uh, should be calling for sanctions for people that want to have nuclear energy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, especially when you have Obama in the U.S. calling for the first, well, not the first nuclear plant to be built in the U.S. because we have one in Vermont, a couple of them, but they're outdated and they're leaking, le leaking uh, toxins in the ground. So, of course, that's going to have an effect on the community. But nonetheless, it's a, that's a totally different story. But you see the hypocrisy of us, the U.S. and the and the West, and you know I I I love the the sense the idea of America as far as the United States and the Constitution goes, but it's a hunk of shit. It's a big pile of bullshit, a box, and and that's that's what we're defending right now in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, now Syria. We have troops in Syria. And um, all around the world with our little bases and our little um, fascist flags flying high wherever we've conquered. And so we are going to tell people that they can't have nuclear energy and they can't have weapons to defend themselves. So, but in Russia, it's pretty much on the same page. They just feel that they should go about it a little differently, right? So here we go. It says, a senior Russian diplomat warned the West on Wednesday against trying to paralyze Iran by targeting the Islamic Republic's energy and banking sectors with crippling sanctions. Russia has in recent weeks signaled growth, growing frustration, sorry, with Iran over its nuclear program, though Moscow has given few indications about what sanctions it might be prepared to sign up to in the United Nations Security Council. The United Nations has said it hopes to see sanctions against Iran in a matter of weeks, and Israel has pressed Russia to back crippling sanctions, though the Kremlin has steered clear of openly supporting calls for further UN sanctions. Oleg Rokhs Roskov, the Deputy Director of the Russian Foreign Ministry's Security Affairs and Disarmament Department, said Moscow would only consider sanctions aimed at strengthening the nuclear non-proliferation regime. Call them what you want, crippling and or paralyzing, paralyzing, we are not going to work on sanctions or other measures 
which could lead to the political or economic or financial isolation of this country. In other words, if the U.S. and the U.K. and all these Western, European, EU, pro-UN, pro-world order um, countries and nations and, and bodies, political bodies, if they get these sanctions passed, it will create political uh, political destabilization in Iran. And that's exactly what they want. But they're not going to come out and say that. And they want to have it so that they have a little revolution in Iran. But I, honestly, I don't think that's going to take place. Based on all the research that I've done with that country and the, at their own CFR documents, they say that it's it's almost not even possible. They're, they're a very nationalistic country, and they're sticking together. And the more we more shit we throw at them, they're just going to get tighter. So, and it says, when asked by a reporter what sanctions Russia might be able to support, he said, quote, those that are directed at resolving non-proliferation questions linked to Iran's nuclear program. Quote, what relation to non-proliferation is there in forbidding banking activities with Iran? This is what, this is a financial blockade and oil and gas. These sanctions are, are these sanctions are aimed only at paralyzing the country and paralyzing the regime, he said. Iran holds 16% of the world's proven gas reserves and 11% of the world's oil reserves, but desperately needs investment to develop them. The United Nations, major European uh, Union nations in Israel, suspect Tehran is using its civilian nuclear program as a cover for the development of a nuclear weapon. And I can just go... I'm not going to go on a limb here. I'm just going to go off the articles that are freaking posted in these into videos, uh, numerous of numerous videos, and you can check those out. Uh, just go to my channel or go to my try to find my videos. Just typing in Iran and Darko 2012, and you'll find them where it says blatantly from the U.S. media that they are incapable of producing a nuclear weapon. They're at 20% weapons grade uranium, and they need 100%. And it would take them a while to do that. So. Sanctions? Tehran denies it is seeking to make an atomic weapon, but the UN nuclear watchdog added to the pressure on Iran last week, saying it feared Iran was actively pursuing nuclear weapons capability. Russian officials this month, for the first time, raised serious doubts about the true nature of Iran's nuclear activities, though diplomats say the call on sanctions lies with Russian's paramount leader, Vladimir Putin. Putin, who serves as prime minister after stepping down as Kremlin chief, rarely comments on Iran, although he last year warned the West against pushing Tehran into a corner. We do not consider the sanctions path the right one. It pushes the situation further and further into a dead end, a dead end which can only be resolved by force, and we do not support that at all, Roskoff said on Iraq's of Iraq's I'm sorry, Iran sanctions. Russia has trade ties worth three billion annually with Iran and weapons contracts that Israel has urged Moscow to renege on including a deal to sell Tehran uh, S-300 air defense systems. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said on Wednesday Russia would not deliver the truck-mounted S-300 missile systems which could protect Iran's nuclear facilities against airstrikes if such sale would destabilize any region. So there you go. And that's exactly what they would be used for. They would be used to fight off air attacks because that's how Israel would begin their little attack along with the US Air Force they would attack strategic locations that they've already had planned since 2004 when I did research on the country and Israel and everything that they are trying to do just look up Seymour, Seymour Hirsch and uh, look up all his great articles that he's written and all the great research he's done based on real intelligence that our governments are talking about and they have all the targets picked out so and they will use an air campaign but first they got to economically destroy them and uh, squeeze them until there's to, to the point that where they're at revolution uh, or at least some kind of uh, instability and turmoil but that still isn't gonna bring them down and Russia sees this and they also are doing business with them so but it will be an air campaign before there's ground troops coming. And it may not happen for a while, but eh, at least you see it coming. So thank you for everybody for checking this out.